When I was a student at, <clears throat> at Oxford, I studied French and German, and we were given a representative book text from each century, and the 18th century book was uh, Les Liaisons Dangereuses. So I've been obsessed with this play, and indeed this novel on which this play is based, since I was a teenager. In Valmont and Mirtoy, you have one of the great coming togethers of a male and female relationship in the whole of literature, and I think in theatre. I once described it as the you know, when I read it at 19, as the best sex education a boy could hope for. There's something deeply both curious and epic about its take on sex and sexuality. This kind of uh, novel was actually the dominant mode of literature. Clearly there was some connection between this sort of licentiousness and the fact that, you know, this country was gearing up for an enormous cataclysm, i.e. the French Revolution. Chaudreau de la Clos, he was a soldier, a writer, he didn't write very much. He was most interested in, in uh, military strategy and the play is laid out like a plan of attack, the characters have plans of attack. So he writes this book, it scandalises Paris. In the 1980s Christopher Hampton is commissioned by the Royal Shakespeare Company to write a play. He doesn't tell them what he's going to do, he goes off and he does this adaptation of Dangerous Liaison. And they weren't best pleased actually and they were not confident enough in the play and they put it in a theatre called The Other Place in Stratford. This great company who were doing Shakespeare plays came together and did this show actually for not very many performances. They gave, it, they gave us 22 performances in that you know, in that space. That was a massive hit. It went into the West End, it went to Broadway, it ran for thousands of performances, and in the midst of all that, Christopher is commissioned to write the screenplay for a movie of it, which then goes on to win the Oscar. So it's just been this extraordinary journey of success that has left it, I think, at the heart of contemporary culture.